Hi guys, Scouter, and welcome back to another adventure. And today, guys, we're talking about the chess merit badge. As you can see, these are all the different type of boards and pieces. This is just the scratch the surface of the ones that you can even imagine or purchase. I bet there's ones from real life battles, books, movies, even aliens and mystical creatures. As this one we have is a Lego Pirates versus the Blue Coats. Oh, he lost his head. Now this one's pretty cool that we found in Ireland. It dates back to the time 1000 AD and a battle between the Irish King and the Irish Peasants and Vikings. Now this is the original one that everyone can just point out and be like, hey, this is the one that everyone knows the movement. And this is the one that's also used during tournaments. Now this one's a pretty cool one that we found. It's a magnetic electronic one, which means you press a button and the piece moves. Now we're going to talk about the history of chess and the different type of movements and how you can relate this to real life battles. This is among the oldest board games created and is one of the most popular games. It is played worldwide and over the internet and it even has its own tournaments. Chess is a two player strategy game that represents a military battle with both sides having troops or I should say pieces to command. Chess is also kind of like checkers in American football. So I wrote down some notes about the history of chess. Chess came from India around the time 600 AD. The original name was called Chaturanga. The name applied to the Indian army during that time. Chaturanga meant four-limbed and was known for the four parts of the Indian army. Cavalry, infantry, elephants, and the chariots. The pieces related to the army as foot soldiers, horses, chariots, and the elephant. The queen and queen represented the ruler and their prime minister. It's really simple to set up the chessboard. You put one queen on the light space and the other queen on the dark space. Followed by that, you put the king right next to her. Then you put bishops on both of their sides, then followed by knights, then by rooks. And then in front of all of them, you put pawns. And you do the same for the other side. The chariots move swiftly but need a clear path. It represents the rook, which moves any number of space, vertical or horizontal. The horse, which could jump over obstacles and turn quickly, was the knight. The knight moves and is the only piece able to jump over pieces, and it moves in an L shape. It cannot be blocked. Up three, over one. Before the bishop was introduced, the elephant was limited to moving two squares only in a diagonal line. The elephant soon became the bishop, and he was able to move as many spaces as he wanted, in a diagonal line. The minister became the queen, which can move any number of spaces diagonally, horizontally, and vertical. Or she has everyone's power except the knight. The ruler became the king, which is a very important piece that once he's taken out, the game ends. But his movement is one, di one space in any direction. The foot soldiers, like the infantry in battle, never retreated from the enemy. So they became the pawn, which was only able to go forward, never backwards. But for the pawn's first move, they're able to move two spaces, then after that, they're only able to move one. The, the only way pawns can kill is by go attacking sideways. Chaturanga spread through India, to Persia, to the Middle East, and then to Europe. Though the pieces names were changed because of the different languages. Then, while I was moving Chaturanga, the name was later changed to, to Chess. During the 1730s, Benjamin Franklin was one of the earliest to play chess. He, used, he also used this knowledge to help with his diplomatic efforts in England. He later published a famous essay called The Morals of Chess, which stated that chess has important educational benefits. Be very careful and think about each move. You could make a mistake that cost you the game. Think what your opponent's move could be. The end game is usually when a few pieces are left. The outcome usually means win, lose, or tie. In competitive chess, you have to record your moves. It also kind of helps because you can memorize the good 
moves and the bad ones that you don't want to repeat. They also standardize the pieces so players can easily recognize them and eliminate their opponents quickly. Stay tuned for our second part where I teach you some methods to win in only a couple of moves. So this is about the end of this video. Hopefully you did enjoy. Please like, please subscribe, and also please share. And bye! One, two, three, go. What's up, guys? Boy Scout Eric here. Welcome to another video. Today, we're talking about chess. As there's many different chess boards that we have right now. This is just scratch the table of what we have. You could probably imagine anything like real life battles, to movies, to books, to even aliens and mystical creatures. As we have right now, we have Lego Pirates versus the Blue Coats. He lost his head. Now this one was we found from Ireland, which is a really cool piece dating back to the time 1000 AD in Ireland between the Irish king and the peasants and the Vikings. Now this one is the boring type, the original type, the one that you see in tournaments. Because the one, they're e really easy to pick out which piece is which. Now this one's a pretty cool one because it's a magnetic one and it's electrical, which means it can move by pressing a button. Now we're gonna teach you about the history of chess and the movements and how you can compare them to real life battles.